Hello friends, this video on data handling part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now quickly look at some of the questions based on whatever we have learned so far. Question number one, organize the following marks in a class assessment in a tabular form. Okay, so this entire numbers which you see on the screen like 4, 2, 6, 5, 7, 1, 5, 9, 3, 6 and so on. They represent the marks scored by students in a class assessment. So first we have to represent it in a tabular form. Tabular form means in the form of a table. Now whenever we have to represent a group of data in the form of a table, what do we do? So the first thing that we do is we arrange the data in a particular order. So we prefer arranging it in increasing order or ascending order. So let, let us first prepare the uh, list or the table. So let us say this is marks. So here you will have marks. So in marks, what are the different marks? Which is the minimum marks that you see here? So the minimum marks is 1. So basically when you arrange it in this form, you see that certain marks get repeated. For example, when you look at 2, so 2 has been repeated twice. So instead of writing 2 twice, what we can do is we can just write it once and then here we can have a separate column for frequency. That is the number of times 2 gets repeated. So 2 gets repeated how many times? 2 times and here we put the tally symbol. So 2 is repeated 2 times, 1 is repeated 1 times. What about 3? So how many times do you have 3? Three? 3 is repeated 1 times. 4 is repeated 4 times. 5 is repeated 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 times. 6 is repeated again 4 times. 7 is repeated 2 times. 8 is repeated once and 9 again is repeated once. So basically, now why do we have these kind of tally marks? You know, it helps us because like for example, for 4, you are counting how many times 4 exists in this huge set of data. So every time you see a 4, you just put a straight line like this. So how, whatever number of straight lines you get, the frequency is that much. So here the frequency is 4, here the frequency is 1, here frequency is 2, here it is 1, here it is 5, here it is 4, 2, 1, 1. So this is the frequency for different marks. So this is a very organized tabular representation of the data and often this is known as frequency distribution table. You will learn about this table in more detail in your next class that is in class 8 but for now I just introduced it so that you can understand that how beautifully we can organize a group of data. Now another simple way of organizing this data in a tabular form is you do not in include this concept of frequency. All you do is you just organize the data in ascending order something like this. So this is another way. So you just have a column called marks and under marks you just write everything the way it is just that you arrange them in ascending order. We didn't have enough space so it went like this. So in this way you can arrange all the marks in increasing order. This is also a simple way of organizing this data in tabular form. But definitely this is a more improvised way of uh, arranging the data. Fine. So we have arranged it in a tabular form. Now let us try to answer the questions. Which number is the highest? Now looking at both the tables you can very easily say which is the highest. The number which is at the end that is 9. So the highest number is 9. And which number is the lowest again? The first number that is 1. So 1 is the lowest. What is the range of data? Now I have already defined range. How do we find range? Range is always equal to the highest number and the lowest number's difference. So highest minus lowest. So highest is 9, lowest is 1. So range will be 8. Fourth one, find the arithmetic mean. So how do we calculate mean? 
you remember mean is nothing but sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations so how many observations do you have now in this case in order to find mean you would actually need this table because if you use this table it might confuse you because here you have not repeated the uh, repeated each mark as many number of times as they are occurring. So if you just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and you say there are 9 items, so there are not 9 items. There are more than 9 items because certain items are getting repeated. Correct? So it is not basically how marks of how many students are there. So that how many gives you the number of items. So you count it from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So there are a total of 20 students because there are 20 marks. So therefore the number of items will be 20 and what would be the numerator? Numerator would be the sum of the observations. That is 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus and so on till 9. Now when you find this sum, it comes out to be 100. So 100 divided by 20 is equal to 5. So the arithmetic mean of the marks is 5. So what, is, what does that mean? That means that if we assume that all the students in the class got equal marks, then each student got 5 marks. So that's the meaning. So this is how we can organize data and we can calculate arithmetic mean. So let us look at the next question. Question number 2. Find the mean of the first 5 whole numbers. Now first of all, what are whole numbers? Numbers starting from 0 till infinity. So what are the first 5 whole numbers? Let us first write them down. So first 5 whole numbers would be 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are the first 5 whole numbers. Now when we have to calculate their mean, so mean would be sum of the numbers so mean would be sum of the numbers divided by number of numbers. That means how many numbers do you have? So that's number of these numbers. So sum of the numbers would be 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 divided by how many numbers you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So divided by 5. So this is equal to 10 divided by 5 which is equal to 2. So the mean of the first 5 whole numbers would be 2. Question number 3. Following table shows the points of each player scored in 4 games. Now there are a couple, there are a couple of questions that you need to answer. First, find the mean to determine A's average number of points scored per game. Now A has played in 4 games, game 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to find average of A's score. That means we have to find arithmetic mean of the scores in games 1, 2, 3, 4. So how do we find the average? So the average would be nothing but the mean. So it would be the sum of the scores divided by the number of games in which the player scored. So this mean would be equal to 14 plus 16 plus 10 plus 10 divided by the number of items. How many items do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So this divided by 4. So the sum comes out to be 50 divided by 4 which is equal to 12.5. So 12.5 is the average score of A in each game. Now to find the mean number of points per game for C, would you divide the total points by 3 or by 4? For C, okay. So in case of C, how is the thing different? Now in case of C, if you look at it, he did not play in game 3. So he actually did not play in all the 4 games. So how many games did he play? He played only in three games. So therefore, when we calculate the mean, what we will do? We will find out the sum of his scores, which is 8 plus 11 plus 13. And we will divide it by the number of games he played. How many games did he play? 1, 2 and 3 because he did not play this game. So we will divide it by 3. So therefore the sum would be 32 divided by 3 which is equal to 10.6.
Therefore, the average score of C would be 10.6. So please understand this. Now, had he played game 3 but scored 0, in that case, we would have divided it by 4 because he had played that game but he performed bad. But in this case, he did not play that game at all. So therefore, this game will not be counted. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.